Here's the putter, Jake Kamart is set to do the honors, and off we go now from Tampa. Fielded right around the eight. And able to get this out to the 25. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And they will be let out by their rookie quarterback. And you know how scouts always talk about checking all the boxes? I think this young man does exactly that when you're looking for an NFL quarterback. Proven leader, teams went 43-6 and six while he was in college, has speed, dual threat ability, and production off the charts while he was in school, and also did a nice job of limiting turnovers. When you put it all together, there's a lot to be excited about for this young quarterback. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Drake London, his intended target, but it'll be second down. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now a first carry here for Robinson. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Before the incompletion on first down, then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going into the quarterback in an expected passing situation. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it, and the Buccaneers are going to take possession of the football. That's kind of a double whammy. I mean, the interception on the opening drive, that's one thing, but to give him this field position, that's another. Absolutely perfect start for this defense. They take the ball away on the opening possession. They know that their offense will get the ball to start the second half. They line them up in field goal position, and to me, they got a chance for a touchdown right here out of the gate. So the Bucs now in great shape to begin their initial possession. Orchestrating the offense will be the top pick in the 2018 draft, and that's Baker Mayfield. And he's a guy who plays with a lot of emotion. He's learned how to channel it really positively because when he throws the football downfield and makes a big play, he'll be the first guy downfield to celebrate with you. But also when his team needs that confidence, when they need that jolt, they turn to him, and he's ready to provide it. First down, here's White, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. To throw on second and six, Mayfield, his throw incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try to hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. They haven't made much of this great starting field position they had. Here's third and six. Throwing Mayfield. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up fourth down. Now, that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together and watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. Giving to the big tight end on fourth. And he is going to have a Buccaneers first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. It's a gain of four that time. And it's good enough for a Tampa Bay first.
Here's Mayfield. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the 7. That's good. The completion there for 7 yards, and it's second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Throwing again on second down. Mayfield. Flushed out right. And he's going to lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. And that's Grady Jarrett who forced his way through to register the sack. Brandon never ceases to amaze me just how fast these defensive ends are in the game nowadays. Part of that is what we've seen in college football where they've gotten smaller and faster on the defensive side of the ball. But they brought that to the NFL because it is hard for an offensive lineman to keep them away from the quarterback. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Now Mayfield. Under pressure, they got him again. Dropped for a loss of seven by multiple defenders. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from 33. And his kick is indeed good, and the Bucs take a 3-0 lead. So an opening drive field goal maybe doesn't whip this crowd into a frenzy, but I think that they will take the early lead. There's no doubt about it. They will always take the early lead, and maybe that celebration comes later if they play well and they can break things open. But right now, this is all about letting the offense just get settled in. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded right around the eight. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't, as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side, because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away, but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. Second and nine now. He's going to drop this underneath for Robinson. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's got Smith here. It'll go down as a gain of six. 
And it'll be second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 43. Give them 18 on the play. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 43. They'll look to throw again. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Again, he'll drop to throw. Forced out to his left. This pass is caught by London. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. And that's how you shake off the interception you threw on the opening drive, come back and throw another strike and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one. The man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Falcon football. From the third team now, they work on first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Got this complete to the tight end pit. And just three yards on the catch there, he couldn't get away. And that will bring up second down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. Back to throw again. Caught on the slant. Touchdown, Falcons! Desmond Ritter on target to Drake London. And the Falcons have taken the lead. Solid response that time by a young quarterback. Last drive interception, this drive the touchdown pass. I like how you described it, solid, because you don't get extra kudos for bouncing back if you're going to be a big-time quarterback. You're supposed to do that. But at the same time, when you're a rookie, that's not guaranteed, is it? Sometimes they hang their heads and they go in the tank a little bit. Not in this case. Bounced back, took his team downfield, and threw a touchdown pass. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. From the 10. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. 
Now the first carry for Chase Edmonds. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Again, they run with Edmonds. And this is going to be back-to-back -back tackles for a loss here as the Falcons' defense yet again drops him behind the line. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long to throw Mayfield. And he wisely will throw that one away. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. On the return is Williams. That'll be a 43-yard punt, but a net of just 33 following a 10-yard return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Desmond Ritter in the Atlanta offense set to go once more. Last drive, surgeon-like, dare I say, seven for seven. That'll help your QB rating. <laughs> it will indeed, won't it? Can you figure out QB rating? Can you do I, it? Can no, you do the formula? No, I just know the higher the number, the better. Yeah, that's what I've been <laughs> that's told, what too. I know. I know that in the NFL, 158.3 is the number they're all trying to get to. I think he was that on that last drive. A throw left side to start out. That's complete. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll look to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover it for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there. It keeps them advancing the ball. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They'll set up a throw. Touchdown! Desmond Ritter on target to Drake London. And they are able to add on to their advantage. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better 
And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Coup now for the point after. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that drive, four plays. And it was finished off by a touchdown catch from Drake London. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. This is taken just shy of the 10. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Mayfield looks to throw. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Mayfield on play action. And incomplete on the deep ball. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope it didn't come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. Here we go. Let's ride out. Let's ride out. The offense on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Mayfield to throw it. He finds his man complete. That's Palmer. And this play comes to a halt at the 33, and obviously that's well short of the first down. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. fourth down so Jake Camarda is out there first kick 47 this one looks good as well the 44 yard punt they're going to wind up losing yardage on the return though and it will be Falcon football Atlanta prepped and readied for its next possession the offense coming back out here. Plenty of energy ready to roll, looking to just add to what they have been doing after scoring a touchdown, Charles, their last time out. And that's a great feeling to have on the sideline, partner, knowing you just won the battle against the opposing defense. And since they came off the field, I'll guarantee you all they want to do is get back out there because they know they have the upper hand on that defense right now. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, it's caught on the right side at Smith. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 25 yards there on the catch and run. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They're going to look to throw. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. And they're going to get this up to midfield.
We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. A reminder coming up in a couple of minutes time, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman, the coach in our EA Sports studios. They'll have a look back at the next-gen stats from this first half of action. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. They'll look to throw now on first down. He's going to go for a big play downfield. Touchdown, Falcons! Drake London on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. Well, Charles, kind of the future of this franchise on display right there. You had a rookie throwing it, a rookie catching it, and taking it into the end zone. Could you imagine if we were in the owner's box right now and we could look at the front office and see the grins on their faces to see the present making plays and knowing what the future will bring with these youngsters going out and making big time moments happen for this team. Koo able to connect on the extra point and the lead is up to 18 now. Just a four-play drive that time. And it was finished off by a touchdown catch from Drake London. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. From the 10. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Mayfield on first down. On the screen, this is Edmonds. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, backdoored them, and that time worked well for a solid game. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Four yards remain for second down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. What's the deal? Let's go, baby. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Mayfield. Open man is Godwin. It's complete. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. 
toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. To throw once more on second and 10. Mayfield eluding the pressure right. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. Now they got to get to the line quickly. On third down, Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. Rock and roll. Here's Jake Camarda now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons' offense at the line. And with 10 seconds left, not really enough time to put something together. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's there you have it. Halftime quickly over. Third quarter, here we go. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. So after a very one-sided first half, what will the second half bring as we are back underway on EA Sports? This one taken just inside the 10. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Bucks ready to go here to begin the third quarter. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. On first and 10, Mayfield. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Running out of the gun with White. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, and they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They'll have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes, 
and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. On second down, they'll run with White. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. Mayfield now. Looking for Evans, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Mike Hughes. And the Falcons are going to get the football here at their own 23. Well, they're certainly in a bad way right now. Not so bad that you can call this one over already, but bad enough that you know you can't toss an interception to open the second half. This just ratchets up the pressure on this team's defense right now. We'll get another look at Drake London as this offense returns to the field. Oh, this defense, they wouldn't mind not seeing him again for a while. <laughs> Three trips to the end zone. How about that? I think right now they would happily go to their general manager and say, is there any way you could get a trade for him, bring him over to our team so we don't have to cover him anymore? Because he is really having a heck of a ball game, isn't he? Boy, he is. I don't know that mid-game trade is going to happen, but good thought. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. <laughs> Second and five. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Good coverage on the outside, and I think that's where he wanted to check that down to. But once he saw the danger over there, he just threw that one over everyone's head. Smart play. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. He'll look to throw. Open man is Miller. He's got it. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. They were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. It's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You just got to pick up a holding call. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I would describe the way that he's played today as mature. He's already moved on mentally from that incompletion, and he's more than ready to throw his next pass downfield. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. This is Miller, complete. 
And they will get this across midfield, but still well short of the first as he's dropped at the 46. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Here's Bradley Pinion now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. A first down throw for Mayfield. The pass is caught by Kate Otten. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender, but the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Five yards remain on second down. Throwing Mayfield. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Well, that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Mayfield. That one to the sideline, and a nice catch there. He stays in bounds, but a penalty marker is down as well. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Here's Williams to return. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And they've got the lead here getting late into the third quarter. And the passing game for them, it's been terrific. We've seen that. But the rushing game, almost non-existent. And with the lead and trying to finish this game off, they need the running game to come back to life. They need to get sparked that way, take some time off the clock, and keep the ball away from their opponents. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And he'll get this to the 32. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Here's second and eight. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Call it a gain of six on the play, and now two yards to go on third down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. The Bucks with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. We have played three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's the Falcons. They've got the football. They've got the lead as we get set to start the fourth.
Back to Robinson now on first down. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time, the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself, and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Robinson with another carry. And some room to roam now. 72 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Boy, I tell you what, when you get a running back who can move like that in the open field, that's something to take advantage of, and they certainly did there. And there's an old chestnut of an expression called getting on your horse. And I hate to use it, but I'm going to right here because it absolutely applies. How about the head of steam he had behind him? And he was absolutely galloping downfield. That was something to see. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And he'll just get rid of it. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. They'll look to throw. And he's got it. Touchdown, Falcons. Mac Hollins from six yards away as his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Another touchdown through the air for them and for this rookie quarterback at the helm. He has put them in a great position, Charles, to get the victory in this one. He's absolutely taken charge. Every touchdown for them has come via his arm. Zero rushing touchdowns, no special teams, no defensive scores. All him throwing the football. He's in cruise control right now, and so is his team. Coup for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. So that drive goes eight plays, and the Falcons score to cap it off. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. This one taken just inside the 10. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games, and we've seen our share of lopsided contests, but in almost all of them, both offenses have put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. A second down throw for Mayfield. Otten brings it in over the middle. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. 
Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And this offense on third down today, just one conversion in eight tries. Not good. Here it's third and two. Mayfield to throw it. This to the former Falcon, Russell Gage. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. First down, Mayfield. Short pass tip, but caught anyway. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Mayfield now from the 50. Flush to his right. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Mayfield on first down. He's going to have the hook up to Gage. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Looking to throw again on second down. Mayfield. Oh, this one taken in by Otten. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 28. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. That one caught along the sideline. Did he stay in? Yes, he did. But hang on here. A penalty marker is on the field. So apparently some grabbing of the jersey there on the O-line. Yeah, just look in the interior, and that's where the penalty occurred. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Mayfield. They're looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. And the Falcons are going to take possession as they've got it at the 42-yard line. And that one, Charles, is just going to about wrap up what was no doubt a dominating defensive performance. Yeah, I don't care what team it is. I don't care who you play, whether they're strong offensively or not. Just giving up three points in the NFL, that's absolutely a dominant performance and one that they can build on. So out come the Falcons now. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. They begin the drive with Robinson, and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Logan Hall is there for the stop, and he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Again, it's Robinson. Five yards, now it's third and five. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Officer, green, blue, check. 
On third down, Robinson. And he's brought down short by a yard. It's a third down gain of four. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, it wasn't a shutout. They did give up the points in the first quarter. But second, third, and fourth quarter, they held them scoreless. Brandon, if you throw a shutout for quarters two, three, and four, you're going to win a lot of games in this league. And this felt a lot like, almost like if you say baseball, and the pitcher goes through the lineup the first time and the hitters get to see him, and then they come out after that and the bats start blazing, right? I think they saw their best stuff in the first quarter and just shut everything down from that point on. What a great convincing performance.